Okay, in this lesson we're going to talk about transformations of absolute value functions. So um, we're going to just draw conclusions about that. You're going to do some parts on your own and you won't be able to check the answer key because tomorrow in class I want to see um, how you guys process and synthesize the information. Um, but uh, basically we're going to go through and talk about each one of these graphs first. Okay, so in this first graph here, um, if you were to make a table and compare it to the mother function y equals the absolute value of x, remember this is supposed to be a v shape. If you were to create a table here and graph this, you are going to get a shape that looks oops, like this. Still v shape, but notice how it shifted. Okay, so. In this case, our mother function usually looks like that, right? It starts at the origin. This has shifted six units to the right. And that's how we would explain the transformation that occurred. So it shifted six units to the right. And from before, we would call that a horizontal translation. Just to bring back some stuff that we talked about earlier. All right, now in graph number two, this is going to shift the graph three units to the left, and this is going to shift the graph two units up. So I would have a, a vertex at negative three, positive two. So my V shape is going to come from here and look like this. Okay. So it shifted left three units. and up two units. All right, now in problem number three, we should understand from yesterday that this is going to stretch our, our uh, absolute value. So normally, if this was our V shape here for the mother function, now our values are stretched and we become a little bit skinnier, okay? This is also a shift. Um, this is going to shift the vertex three units. So I'm actually going to start with that first and graph a vertex at three zero here. And create quite a bit skinnier slope here. Our V shape is going to be slightly skinnier by a factor of two. Okay, so there's my graph for number three. In number four, I have three different shifts here. Actually, sorry, let's go back to three and describe what happened. So um, in number three, we have that it was shifted right three units and vertically stretched. All right, now in number four, we have three different uh, translations here three different translations. We've got it shifting it left three units and up two units. So left three, up two places of vertex here. And this is going to not only um, make our graph shrink, so it's going to get fatter, right? A shrink takes our normal one and it shrinks the value down basically to make it look fatter or wider. But it's also going to flip it because that negative sign out in front. So we now have a graph that will look like this. Okay, so um, this one has been uh, shifted left three and up two units. And all the values have shrunk. This has also been reflected over the x-axis. Okay. So in this next section here, you're going to be able to draw some conclusions about the general form of an absolute value function. So given this form, which we already talked about in class a little bit, where hk is your vertex, we are going to have you explain the following um, shifts. So when h is positive, okay, if h is greater than zero, then the vertex shifts in which direction? So you're going to explain here and fill in the blank. And complete that. You can also compare 
Now this, um, for problem number one here, it says compare the equation y plus 7 equals negative 9 times the absolute value of x minus 3 to the parent or mother function. Now you're used to seeing that 7 appear on the other side, so if you need to subtract that 7 um, so that you have y by itself here, that's okay. The same thing with over here, add that to the other side, okay? Alright, now 3 through 6 are good thinking questions. I'd like to see what you're able to do on your own to answer these questions here. And then number 7, I'm going to help you guys with right now. So for number 7, um, we're just given a picture and we're asked to figure out the equation of it. So this is a skill that requires you to understand really well what the, um, the absolute value graph looks like. So we have the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Okay, so this is the general form. Now from this graph, you can tell h, k automatically, right? You can tell me what the um, vertex is, and the vertex in this case is at 2, 0. So right away, I can already plug right back into here the point 2, 0. So I have y equals a times x minus 2 plus k, which happens to be 0. Okay, and then the only thing left for me to figure out is this a value, right? I need to know what is a, because right now I have no clue. So all I need to do here to figure out what a is, is I'm going to pick up random point that lies on the graph here. So let's pick the point 4, 2. This is the coordinate 4, 2. I could do this again with any point I want. I could pick a point here, I could pick a point here. It doesn't matter which point I pick. I'm going to use the point 4, 2 though. So 4, 2 represents an x, y pair, right? x, y. We've done this before with linear equations. All you need to do now is plug in 4, 2 in for x, y and substitute that out. So if I plug in 4, 2, y is replaced with 2, right? y is replaced with 2. This a is still remaining an a because I don't know what that is. The x term is now the 4 that I just replaced it with. So I have 4 minus 2 and then plus 0 here. And now I'm just solving this absolute value equation here. So I have 2 equals the absolute value of 2 times a. The absolute value of 2 is just 2, so I have 2 equals 2a. Divide out the 2, and I'm left with a equaling 1. So now I can plug that back in to the original equation that I started off with. So y is equal to the absolute value of 1 times x minus 2 plus 0. So there's two redundant things here. I don't really need the 1 in front because I'm not really changing it. It's not stretching or shrinking, and I don't really need the 0. So this equation is actually the absolute value of x minus 2. Okay? So to recap here real quick before you guys try the second one on your own. You're going to start with the general form here. y equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. And you are going to plug in what you know. In this case, they give you the vertex, so you can just plug the vertex right in. That's what we did. We found hk right away. We plugged that back in for h and for k here. After that, all we had left to do is solve for a, because it's the only missing variable, right? So we plugged in an xy pair, and we just found that xy pair by plugging in any point that we wanted. And after plugging it in, we solved the equation here for a. We ended up with a equaling 1. And then we plugged it back in, that information back into our general form right here, and simplify. Okay? So you guys go ahead, pause it, try b on your own, and then you can play back the solution here as well. Alright, so following what I was just talking about, we're going to take this general form right here, and we're going to start with our vertex. So our vertex here is at the point 4, 6. So I'm going to plug in 4, 6 back into my general form, and I get y equals a times the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 6. Alright, now the only thing left to do is figure out what does a equal. So I don't know what that is yet. So now I'm going to pick I'm going to pick an xy pair. Okay, so select a point. Pick a point. And in this case, let's see what goes through the corner of a box. This one looks pretty good. I'm going to use 5, 2. So now I'm just going to substitute 5, 2 in for this x and this y. So now I have 2 equals a times the absolute value of 5 minus 4 plus 6. So notice all that happened here that I changed was this 5, 2 is now replacing the x and the y. So I'm going to solve this equation now for y or for a. So 2 equals a times the absolute value of 1 plus 6. 
the absolute value of 1 is just 1. So I have 2 equals a plus 6, subtract the 6, and I end up with a equaling negative 4. Now I take this a value and I plug it back into my original right here, because now I have all missing parts for this equation, and I'm left with y equaling absolute value, or a, sorry, negative 4, times the absolute value of x minus 4 plus 6. So this is the equation of that absolute value graph here. And we are done with this lesson.